uh, get the, uh, our, our summit uh, going. Uh, my name is Michael Daniel. I'm uh, the chairman and co founder of the Canadian e Network. Uh, most of the time, I find Montreal as the CEO of Learn. The ground building and the AEO of the community no i think it was a hilton or something Online and blended learning. Environment where people 
and it also gives us a chance to talk a little bit about our accomplishments and that we don't want to do that. But that's part of the value of the ADD learning network. I'm really excited to have everyone here uh, today. And uh, I think mean, incidentally, one of the things that we wanted to do, obviously, was really focus on 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 here. We had a great representation of British Columbia, a great representation of Alberta. Uh, Representation, very small one, but that, you know, but that, 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 um, uh, we want to reach to the end, and a real pleasure to have you here. Uh, I'm going to go back and forth during the Doesn't have cowboy boots on. No, I don't. The record. <laughs> um, and am I missing anybody? Oh, oh, excuse me, Paul. Yeah, yeah. 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 and Paul, let's not say everyone probably. Many of you already know Paul. Again, uh, uh, working with us here. Just last year or so, he's been meeting on board. board. So, so May. May. I'm not even going to that that long. long. So, so again, thank, thank you all. I'm going to pass it over to Randy, who has some uh, housekeeping and a few other things to do. If you didn't already, the wireless uh, is on the uh, Inter Intercontinental Toronto Conf. Is it in two, three, four, six, eight? Is the number splash by? A couple of other things that are flashing by out there is that we're going to encourage people throughout the duration to add your voice into the curated notes. We will have those. Uh, placed uh, in uh, Google Drive, and we will archive this event. We're going to be snapping some pictures. If you don't want your picture taken, if someone snaps it, uh, just ask them not to post and keep it to themselves. If you are posting pictures, we have a Facebook page and an events piece that you can put on, but obviously Twitter with the hashtag, uh, hashtag CannyLearn uh, for tweeting and posting any of those kinds of things. So we will curate them. Um, and oh, washrooms. Oh, yeah, oh, that's all the online stuff. Washrooms are just out the door to the right. We're going to have a, a little coffee, tea, and cold drink break at three o'clock as we transition from our first session. Uh, and then this evening, please uh, ensure that you come and join us for David Porter tonight, who's going from the CEO of the, from eCampus Ontario. Uh, David was transplanted from BC. Who was uh, he led the development of BC campus and now is leading the development of eCampus Ontario in post secondary? He's here because really we're K 20, and so the important part is to understand how what we do in the K 12 system leads to success for students to move on into the post secondary as well as in the workplace. And technology and e learning has a very significant role now that's being played in those spaces and places. Sorry, I forgot. We could, we're also streaming this online. Sorry, I needed to step, step in front of the camera, camera myself, <laughs> uh, so you can see. Um, and so we will be recording some of the sessions, and we'll ask the presenters after. We have a couple of them having the recording posted that we won't, but we try to create archives on our, our website so that those that can't make events can actually share in part of that as well. But as we all know, the true networking, which is what. It's here, here. It's, it's in, in the conversations, conversations and the by the ways and the new people that you meet. So, so that's, that's what the social is, is a box, and it's hosted uh, tonight by Great Slam. Slam. 
and they'll, and they'll be, be here and say a few words about that. that. We work with, with our partners, whether they be in practitioners in school base or beyond or in ministries, which we do, but also in the corporate areas of those products and services that those in our network are using uh, and those that are <laughs> important to the network. So we try to bridge that by having social and other event opportunities where we need to do some of the corporate focus. So I also want to recognize the, the folks, folks from Canada, Canada as well, we're, we're here, here as well, if you guys want to stand up. up. And, and so, so they're, they're here to learn, to share, to share uh, and to get a sense in terms of what the needs are that we have here. So please don't hesitate to talk with them, find out about what's going on as well. And we're going to keep going in the house as well. And the same thing, obviously, because you all know these well, those of us in Ontario. Are using, using it consistently. I use it in Vancouver University, University, University where I teach online courses, courses as well. Um, so, so the platforms, there's a lot of platforms, platforms and options, and what we try to do in the network is cover those technologies as effectively as we can to ensure that people can get a chance to have those conversations and give them input. So, thank, thank you for coming. Can I just say anyone on the corporate side that's here? And it'll be great fun for folks who are here to get. So, so I'd, I'd like to introduce now Paul, who's going to introduce our first session. Bon après-midi tout le monde, bonne réaction. J'aimerais prendre cette occasion aussi comme membre du conseil d'administration et aussi comme membre de l'équipe provinciale du Cabaretou, le conseil d'administration du je veux prendre l'occasion aussi de saluer mes collègues francophones qui viennent de me parler en rencontrant à la réception de cet après-midi. Et on voit que les gens de la il y a des gens de Bonne-Nouvelle, euh, du beau bon et même du Québec sont ici, donc bienvenue à vous tous. Welcome all from Ontario, from whatever part of Canada you are, please feel happy and free here in Ontario this afternoon for the next two days. I'd like to introduce you to you the two speakers in this, for this first keynote. Uh, this afternoon, we will be, uh, just to give you a bit of the background and context, in Ontario, our brand and the Minister of Education are two. Big, two big, big branches, branches are important. French language, French language branch and English language, language branch. We work together, separately but together, to make sure that the vision and the policies of the Ministry of Education are well, uh, well uh, established and presented and uh, understood in Ontario. And we have two members of the equivalent of TO at the O. Two members from the Ministry of Education, the Educational Officers of the to give us a, a uh, quick overview of the vision and the initiatives in e-learning in Ontario, but from, from the perspective of the French language branch. And for the morning, we will have the opportunity to, uh, to uh, uh, have uh, members of the English language branch from TLO to give up there are also the English language branch perspective and uh, initiatives in e-learning. Donc, sans plus tarder, j'aimerais inviter euh, mes deux, je les appelle mes deux collègues, parce qu'on travaille de très près euh, au niveau de la France et de l'Arnée, Noémie Bergeron et Nathalie Pénin. Noémie et Nathalie will present, will have a presentation, they'll be, they'll be able to, they'll be part of the English, you'll see uh, the slides also be uh, on our day. And uh, they'll be able to they'll move from French and English from what I hear to be. So I will leave it at that. And uh, we'll have the next, next first, first part of our summit. summit. Yeah. Thank 
nous fait légèrement plaisir d'être ici, comme Paul l'a mentionné. Merci pour la belle présentation, Paul. C'est euh, très bien, merci. Euh, on, on va réellement faire la présentation bilingue. Euh, je, vais, euh, je vais répondre aux questions en anglais, comme en français, vous nous aussi. Donc, euh, sentez-vous bien à l'aise, so we will answer questions either from uh, in English or in French. Okay, you will see my tongues in English. They are so, 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 so I'll try my best. Okay, so first of all, just to start, to give you a, a, a little background, uh, today's presentation will be uh, Ontario's journey that will reflect uh, what our work, what we have been doing since um, several years. So, um, so, so that our students um, develop necessary competencies to achieve excellence. And achieving excellence is uh, actually is our real vision for education in Ontario. And um, we, since 2014, and you will be able to, uh, I know that we didn't, um, share our presentation but it's made to be shared so you will be you will have access to the um, to the green vision either the french or the english and uh so um, all the documentation we we also the documentation we are supplying today will be both in french and in english so just to um today we will share with you ontario's success our challenges and also the next step. Um, we have, like Paul said, we have our work, our English language uh, colleagues. They will make another presentation tomorrow. We work very closely together, collaboratively, collaboratively, and um, we uh, we actually we even became very good friends <laughs> they were supposed to be here this afternoon they are in toronto but uh they had an emergency meeting so they could not be here but they said we'll be with you in spirit so uh tomorrow they will give a presentation they will talk more about our real vision so we won't go uh we won't explain our new vision and they will give you uh their um how they are um, guiding and supporting the English language cohort. So Lou and Lee and I will uh, talk how we work collaboratively with our work colleagues, but also we will aim sometimes a little bit more on how we guide the French language uh, cohort, okay? So talking about um, achieving excellence, uh, the real vision, what we did is that uh, the PEDEL the is the um, uh, director, French language uh, directors of education. They are part of CODE. CODE is all the directors of education in Ontario. But PEDEL is part of CODE, but it only for our 12 language school boards. In total, in Ontario, we have 72 school boards. So, the Codel said um, in 2014, well, uh, the French language school boards um, are doing lots of work in technology, in uh, that 21st century shift, and uh, we want to give them tools to, um, we want to give us, us, because we are the directors of education, uh, tools to guide the, the school boards to um, either put words on a, a practice or were a, give vocabulary or um, have grids or tables uh, so we can uh, work with um, the competencies, we can learn what the competencies are. So they said, they came to us at the ministry and they said, would it be possible uh, so we could work together and uh, you could um, do a literature review. 
internationally. So we talked uh, to authors, researchers, uh, went to several, lots of conferences, did lots of reading. And so we did a literature review. From that literature review, we wrote the document on map, okay? So in that document on map, so the translation document, uh, you have it in French and English. Uh, it gives, it gave us in 2014, uh, the calls at that time where all the ministries of education, the universities, uh, the school boards were in their 21st century shift. So it gives you a good sense of, okay, in the competencies, what emerges from the, um, what emerges from the literature review? What does uh, professional learning look like in the 21st century? Where should we go? What are the essential conditions for us to, um, to, uh, to, um, to aim if we want to make a change in our school board? What uh, does learning environment look like? So in this document, you have you have the 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 what's emerging from the literature review. In 2015, then with our uh, English language board colleagues, we concentrated only on uh, much deeper on not much deeper but um, on competencies. And when I I say on competencies, it we took the foundation document from 2014, did more, continued our reading, and in the um, discussion foundation document, or, or um, yeah, the, it's called the uh, discussion document, and uh, then we give you the, um, the, 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 the picture of the rest of, well, the continuity of our literature review. So, this one reflects the competency that emerges from the literature review, but this one is still good because it has, it has not only the competency, but it has the professional develop, development, uh, technology, how to use technology, what are we saying about technology? So. Um, so that's just to, to, to set the, the table. And everything in Ontario, after that, we started to be very serious about our shift in the 21st century, even if we were already in the 21st century for, for a while. Okay, so just to give you um, how we made that shift is that um, emerging from the literature review, there were three essential gateways to make an efficient digital shift. So the first one is the participatory pedagogy. Okay, so in that you will have the um, a redefinition of the teacher's and the student's role. We call it a partenariat educatif, educational partnership. Okay. If um, and I will come back on that on that matter a little a little uh, later. We also learned about the contribution of the technology. What does it mean? It means that the student has to learn how to use the tool, when to use it, to what contribution. So we can have, um, so we can learn, okay? So he can have, he can augment his, uh, uh, increase his knowledge, okay? So these are the four, um, the, the four um, signification that uh, came out of the, 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 the role of the technology. So it's not about, technology is not, the 21st century. Technology 
is the tool. Technology is the medium to achieve knowledge. And the last uh, condition to make that shift is it has to be a culture of systemic um, commitment. Both not only the ministry, but at the school board, at, yeah, the school board, um, uh, the school, the teachers, uh, the students, everyone has to be part of it. Everyone has to engage themselves. So here, what I did, I put the global competencies. <coughs> These are the global competencies that emerge from the literature. Okay, so um, you can read them. So I just want to give you an example of how uh, how Ontario sees those global competencies. And I'd like to share with you, uh, not share with you, but give you an example. And a good example is that because those competencies, they existed before, they're not new. It's only because they are, they open the student to the world. So, for example, if we have a, a, a project, we want to engage the student in that project. We want him to be motivated. For example, we can start with um, a, a project. Okay, let's say a, a complex issue, uh, pollution of water. Okay, the, the lakes polluted lakes. So then you would have a student, for example, would say, well, for me, the, the quality of water is very important because I like to, uh, I have a scientific uh, uh, love, okay? So I would like to uh, learn about the water. What happens? What makes that water uh, become polluted? What, what, so I would like to make some experiences. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some experiences. Maybe I want to talk to researchers. Maybe I want to talk to other students to see, does it happen in, in elsewhere in the world? What happens? What, at what, what's the main contribution to pollution? Okay. And then talk to other students, talk to other adults, talk to other companies or communities. Another student would say, oh, well, me, it's fish. Because I like fish, because I don't, I like to go fishing with my parents. I like to go fishing with my, my friends. So for me, I'm going to see how it affects fish. Okay. Is it more uh, one kind of fish? Is it uh, in more one part of Ontario or another or somewhere in Canada? Can I speak to other uh, people who live the same thing? <coughs> okay. And we could work together. And we could see what they are doing, okay? Or another person would be walking on the beach and saying, oh, there's all kind of pollution. I have to do something for the environment. So they all lead with, they all start with their beliefs, their competencies, and what they like. So they become more engaged. That way, homework isn't only homework. Homework is they don't even see it as homework. They will want to go to back at their place to continue to work together. So, uh, and to chat with their, their friends and to look on the internet and to look on YouTube and to look on, okay? And to chat about it and to blog about it. And that's what we want in our classroom. That's how much we want technology. We also work uh, on uh, the working committee with the CMEC and uh, to write the Pan Canadian Global Competencies. Uh, here they are because they are now uh, public. And um, Ontario, New Brunswick, and Manitoba was um, uh, writing the documents. And uh, so we had lots of meetings, and now we continue our, our discussion on. Uh, the kind of Canadian uh, global uh, competencies. From the 
literature review, we found out, you know, in Ontario, we uh, our curriculum is based on expectation. From the literature review, we found out that it's more um, global wise. They're more aiming towards competence. So the students become more competent. Okay, so now we are rethinking all the evaluation, the assessment, to aim more on the know-how, the process, the acquiring process of learning. So we are in very deep reflection right now. Okay. When I said I was going to come back in the role of the student and the teacher, to go back to my uh, example, the student will become a researcher or chercheur because he will look, he will take the technology he needs to acquire the knowledge he wants and to speak to the people he wants and to communicate and to uh, collaborate and to really contribute. So he will become, he will use technology efficiently. And most of all, he will become a self learner because he will be so engaged. He will make himself some grips, some notes. He will develop a healthy working habit. For the teacher, that person will give student guidance. guidance will really be there for them. Ensuring quality and rigor, very important because often you hear parents say that in um, uh, because technology is here, students don't know how to write anymore. Well, it's not true because we need to write good questions. You know, how to, uh, you have to learn how to write the question to get the, the answer you want. And it's, if it's full of errors, people won't take you seriously. So you need to apply yourself. All that to say, it comes back to the basics in uh, pedagogical insight. So if your angle from pedagogy is technical and authentic, so technical that addresses a real, a realistic context, complex issue that the student can, can live and see. Authentic, not to have grades to give to the, to the teacher, okay? Not to give the project to the teacher, to have the grades, no. With an intentional public, okay? So that way the student will be much more motivated and engaged. All right, so we've been talking a lot about how the student needs to be at the center of their learning. And I'm sure that you've all been in situations where you've seen students and the way that as soon as you give them a technological tool, whether it be an iPad, an iPhone, a computer, they can kind of take charge of their own learning and they can go on YouTube, as I mentioned, and they will learn how to beat these crazy video games that I don't even know where to begin to start playing all because they have some online community that already exists for them. So these students are used to being connected. They grew up in a world where these connections exist and they're able to very easily access what each other has to offer. How can we help to support that? So in Ontario, what we have done um, is we've created resource banks that are available for the teachers to use with the students. Um, the first one that's mentioned, the Ontario Educational Resource Bank or ORERB, uh, en français, c'est la BDO, la Banque de Ressources Éducatives de um, those ones are all available to the teachers directly in what we call the VLE, so the virtual learning environment. And this virtual learning environment, or EAV, Environnement d'apprentissage virtuel in French, is available to every single student and every single teacher in the province within the, uh, the Ontario public school system. Um, I'm actually going to take a second just to exit out of the presentation. I don't know if you have any notes or points or whatever. Um, what we also wanted to do is to give those students and teachers a very easy way to access that learning environment. We created a landing page that's e-a-v.ca. 
Now, all of the stuff that I'm about to show you is only available for French language school boards. Um, so as we mentioned at the beginning, we are showing the perspective from the French language board. Um, so that is for those 12 school boards. And there's also a 13th organization that's part of all of this, which is the Kevin Fou. Um, so Paul Lachance, uh, who was speaking earlier, uh, is a part of that organization. And essentially the Kevin Fou on the French side are there to support the online learning for the students in the province. Uh, one of the realities of being a francophone in Ontario is that you are a minority. So on vit dans un milieu francophone minoritaire. What that means to us is that we don't necessarily have as many students, as many teachers per region to go and support uh, the learning of all of our students. So one way that we use to try and solve that issue is to create the consortium, uh, which offers those online courses to all of the students in the province. So whether a student comes from North Bay or Capistason or Hearst or Toronto, they all have access to the same online courses. So by centralizing the online learning, we give access to more students to courses that they may not be able to access within their own school system because of lack of students or lack of teachers for specific subject areas. So this uh, EAB central page, so EAB is the VLE in English, essentially the students or teachers can come to this page and then they click on whatever school board they're a part of. Now it's giving me errors because I'm already logged in in other, in other boards. But for example, if you click on this one here, it would bring you straight to the school board's page um, to log into the system. Uh, the platform that we do use for the virtual learning environment is uh, D2L Brightspace. So if you've ever worked with D2L, you might recognize a few things in the next uh, few moments that I'm about to show you. Um, once they log in, then they get access to their, uh, their VLE. And in the VLE, uh, each school board can kind of design it to their own taste. So they can add links um, to important pages that the teachers use, uh, websites that the students might use. And they always include links to, for example, the OER specific resource banks for teachers who just one click are automatically signed on. Um, so by centralizing that, it helps a lot with the distribution of resources. I'm not missing anything there, but talk about the Kevin Fu and the VLE. Um, what comes afterwards is the courses themselves. So within the, the ministry on the French side, we work very closely with the CFORP, which is the Centre Francois Ontarien de Ressources Pédagogiques, and they help us develop these online courses that help support our vision. So as Natalie mentioned, we want the global competency to be at the center of the student learning. And in order to do that, we have to be able to kind of guide the student to become a self-learner. Using these principles, we design these modular courses. So the whole purpose of the modular courses is to get the student to want to inquire around a central question and to reflect on their current knowledge, to acquire the knowledge that they need to complete whether it be an assignment or a final evaluation task, which always revolves around questioning. So each course always starts with a video. So for example, this one is uh, Introduction to Kinesiology. So it would be a little video that would explain I don't know if you have sound, probably not, but you play a few seconds of it just so <laughs> you get a bit of an idea. They're usually uh, animation-based uh, videos, and then they, they get the students thinking about what the course is about. Uh, once they're done with the video, they have the option to close it. And then here, they have access to all of the course content in one place. So right at the center of the modular courses, um, so hard to see on the screen. <laughs> I'm just going to mirror my screen for a second so I can read it off to you from uh, my Mac screen because mm -hmm. mirroring will. And like in the USA, yeah. uh, you have, you are the. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah, so essentially, right at the center, which I'm highlighting right now, is the main question that you can access. So in this case, it says. Uh, hmm. I'm, I'm not good at naming these, these muscles, but Titius, Altius, Fortius, comment y arriver par l'étude du mouvement? So essentially, it's asking, asking the student to think about these, uh, these concepts and how can they use the study of movement to get there. So as soon as they click on that, they get access to their final evaluation, which is technically known as the final exam, if you would. Um, and here they have the reflection questions for the course. So this is the actual task that we have to complete at the end, and we have the description with all of the different steps. 
So one of the ideas of giving the students the final evaluation task right off the bat is that along their learning throughout the course, they can keep that one front of mind. And it's always going to be a, a question of inquiry that forces the student to reflect, so it's the non google question. And it also gives them the opportunity to kind of choose their own format and choose the way that they want to proceed to complete that evaluation task. And the reason why we think that this could be a formative evaluation right at the beginning is to go back to that intentional uh, in, uh, to the top. Uh, because if we want it to be, if we want the student to be engaged and motivated, it's just like that. If we have to read a text, but we don't know what to look for in that text. We will say, okay, am I supposed to remember the, the name, the description, the numbers? How do you want me to read, or how do you want what do you want me to put the intake on? So it's the same thing with the student. Um, we they learn during the school year or during their session, but after a while. Okay, they take notes, they take notes. Okay, this is important to remember. And then comes the exam. Okay, I'm gonna try to remember everything or to recap or to, okay? But no, why don't have the, the exam or the, 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 the summative question right at the beginning? And this course is, a, is made in cascade. So you have the summative, Oh, <laughs> so essentially it's just because they have that question right away, they're able to keep it front of mind. Um, the way that the modular courses are built, so we've got, so right now we're in the CAD format, but we've got five modules right at the top of the screen, and the students can choose their point of entry. So they can actually go in and look at what the different modules are asking them to do and what the different modules are talking about, and they can choose the order in which they want to complete those tasks in order to prepare themselves for that final summative evaluation. Um, each one of those tasks uh, will typically have some activities. We try to use whatever technology exists. Um, so for example, in the new courses we're developing for uh, science, we try to use virtual reality uh, inside of them. Um, for some of them, we're going to use, uh, in grade seven and eight, we use little video games where the, the students have to play a game similar to like Flappy Birds or those types of games to learn about the environment or the geography or history. And it keeps the students engaged and it, it makes them kind of want to keep the course going. Um, I'm going to go back here. And so essentially once the, uh, once the students have completed all of the modules, then they can go back in and they can go back into that final evaluation task and complete the final evaluation. Um, the teacher in a course similar to this one takes in all the roles that uh, Natalie described earlier. So instead of being uh, teacher-centered learning. Uh, the teacher is more there just to be a guide for the students. So they're there to answer questions, they're there to give them assistance, um, they're there to even just talk with the students. So if the student is, is in the process of questioning and they reach a point where they need more information or they, they need guidance as to where to go next, then the, the teachers are there to support them through that learning. So it makes it a little bit more of a one-on-one -on -one experience for the students even though there may be just as many, if not more students in one class as, as a regular uh, in, in the building physical classroom where you have the students in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And questions are good questions. Mm -hmm. So the teachers ask good questions, meaning they don't answer the question. Yeah. They okay. let the students find the answer. It's always that. reflection practice questions. Mm -hmm. So that's just a, an, an example of a modular course. Um, there are quite a few courses that are developed at the Ministry of Education, and it's important to keep in mind that not all of those courses were developed in this way because we've been developing online courses since 2008. So the courses that were developed back in 2008 will not have the same modular feel with the question inquiry and the summative task and everything. So what we're currently developing, which is something that I'm showing you guys, but it's not fully available to the teachers yet, is a kind of interface where the teachers can go in and preview what courses look like before they take the copy to use with their students. Um, and essentially the way we've got this built is they go by a subject and everything is color coded. So the red courses are gonna be the, the 2008 courses that we're speaking of. The green ones are the ones that were developed later but are still not modular courses. And then the blue ones are something here we didn't modular courses. So using an interface like this, uh, all of the teachers 
once they log into the VLE, they have this tool called the Swiss Army Knife and the Keep and Stitch, uh, which lets them open up a page and we're going to integrate this tool right into that page. So the teachers are gonna be able to go in and for example, they see that uh, the Enthusiastic is a modular course. They can click on Aperçu du cours. Right now it's bringing me to a login page because as I said, it's not the full interface quite yet. Um, and I, <laughs> it's telling me I'm not authorized because I think it's one of those new ones. Uh, but essentially they'll be able to preview, uh, they'll be able to preview the course and then they would be able to look at the course a little bit like I'm looking at the methodology one. They can take a look and navigate through it and see what the questions are, the activities. And if they like the course, there's going to be another button that says, hey, you can see or make a copy. And instantly that course is going to be copied into one of their course shells in their environment. So using a, a type of, I like to call it a restaurant menu like this, they get to kind of look and pick and choose what they want for their classroom and then they can copy it directly into their courses. So th this is a new tool that's supposed to be ready for the fall, so should be ready soon for the Ontario teachers on the French side, and that'll help them a lot to know which course they might want to use in their classroom. Hmm. Oh yeah, well, uh, so for those of you who may not be um, familiar with the T2L Brightspace environment, uh, one of the, or some of the tools that the teachers can use. So for example, there is the uh, forum, which is a discussion forum. So the students actually throughout the course, uh, there are activities that will ask them to collaborate with other students. In those cases, they go into the forum and then every uh, question or every activity has a specific discussion forum and they can go in there and they can create posts and then actually comment on posts from other students as well. So that gives them some interactivity for the students who are taking a fully online course. Um, there's also the Pigeonier, which is a Dropbox. Um, so that's a tool where the students can go deposit uh, tasks that they've completed or anything that the teacher decides they want to open up a, a Dropbox for, essentially the students can go in and deposit those files and the teachers can consult them and send them back to feedback. And then there's also a online portfolio uh, that's just giving me the welcome message because I've never been in this portfolio uh, which is essentially a portfolio where the students can go in and deposit uh, information whether it be uh, their learning it can be their class it can be uh, files folders and the portfolio is getting upgraded uh, by B2L right about now so this this is the old portfolio we're looking at but it's getting a, a major revamp and I have, I have seen some previews of it and I'm pretty excited to share that with the teachers. Um, so those are kind of the tools that the teacher can use to interact with the students directly. Um, there's also a built-in email system inside the environment that the students can use, um, or if they have an email within their school board as well, they can use that to collaborate with their online teacher. Because as I mentioned earlier, the teachers are all centralized for the entire province. So many students may be taking a course with a teacher that's on the other side of Ontario and they would be able to collaborate and communicate with them. Uh, we can also use uh, video environments as well. So we, we have done a few uh, pilot projects where the teachers would show up on the screen as a video and then the students would interact with them. And what we found is that the environment in which the students are the most motivated to work is the hybrid environment. So especially with the younger learners, they like to have that presence, that physical teacher environment, whether it be on Skype or on FaceTime or in person, uh, but they also like being able to go in and just pick their own point of entry and do the modules and all of that. So we did a, a pilot project in grades seven and eight uh, for geography and history, where for half of the uh, year, the students followed a completely online course with an online teacher, and it was one of the modular courses. And then uh, for the second half of the year, the uh, just going to see here if I can pull it up. Uh, so for the second half of the year, this is my sound test. Yay! <laughs> so for the second half of the year, uh, it was the, the teacher in the classroom that kind of took it over and then taught the other subject in a hybrid format. So then that teacher was there physically in the class and all of the students were able to pick their own points of entry and do the modules. And they would all be in the classroom with their computers, but they'd be able to interact with one another if they needed help, or if they had questions, or if they wanted to discuss. And at the same time, the teacher was present to answer the questions. 
And every single one of those students, when they have the choice between these two formats, they elect the hybrid format. So we're trying our best to get the, the teachers in Ontario to feel more and more comfortable using those modular courses and using the online platforms to help the students get access to that type of information. There we go. So th this is the uh, grade seven geography one. Um, so again, it always starts with that video at the top, kind of an introductory video. Uh, the students can watch it. They're usually about two to three minutes long because as we all know, kids get disinterested after about two to three minutes on YouTube. So it's true about our classes as well. Um, and then once they go in, the modules in this case, they're separated by country because of geography. So they've got five different countries to explore. When and they when click- you, uh, When you talk about modules, do you mean trends in the yeah. curriculum? And they are not with video. So the student can choose the trend they want. And, but once they start one, they have to finish it. Yeah. You cannot just decide to start one and then I'll say, oh no, I don't want to go there, I'm going to try another one. So they've got those five five trends or five modules to go through. Um, again, because it's a grade seven and eight course, this is actually one of the ones that had one of those games. So if you're on a computer, the game is Splash Games. Uh, but we did come up with an app uh, for Google Play and the Apple App Store. So if they happen to be following the course and they have an iPhone or an iPad, or an Android, they can actually download the app and play the games on there. Yeah, and to create those um, yeah. those games, um, we hired a company from uh, Vancouver to come and sit at the table with us. They are video games creator, and we had educators at the table also. Mm -hmm. So we were thinking together, and the video creators were able to hear what we wanted and Ontario's vision and vice versa. So we were working together. So it was a nice learning process. It's a great collaboration, mm -hmm. which is one of those global competencies. Um, and then each within each module as well, it's not just kind of a one. They just go in and they work nonstop. They, they're separated with missions in this case. So they have five different missions. So the first one's about a, a volcano, and then it's about uh, la ceinture de feu, so the fire belt. Uh, and then the culture and treasures. So they, they take their missions, they go through, and once they complete the module, they can go back and, and pick a different one as well. And even if they are in grade seven and eight, they receive the commit and the, uh, the, the final exam, the final yeah. exam right, right, right at the beginning. Yeah. So it follows that same, the same format as the modular courses. All right. I think I'll stay in this mode because I may need to open more tabs again. Um, so that's kind of a, a quick overview of the online courses in Ontario. And as I mentioned, we are going for the hybrid format as well. Um, but to fully reach that hybrid teaching, we need all of those teachers to be on board. So anything that we can do to help them is how we can get them to move forward. So in Ontario, we do have um, these learning contracts. Uh, so on the English side, they're called Belt Contracts and Belt Contracts for Technology Enabled Learning and Teaching Contracts and District E-Learning Contracts. Okay, I can't say I actually works with them more than I do. I, I only work on the French side. Um, so on, on the French side, instead of those two contracts for school board, we have one called the PEAV, Personne Responsable de l'Environnement d'Apprentissage de Suez. Um, so it's the person responsible for the VLE. And the roles is, is a little bit deeper than that because they also go in and support uh, the implementation of new technologies within the school board. And they are kind of our link to the teachers and to the classroom. So those 12 people, uh, they regroup a few times during the year in person so that all 12 school boards will change one, one another their best practices and what works and how they can get there as well. Um, so it's very important to keep that collaboration going, not only within one school board, one school, but within all the 12 school boards as well, and with the ministry, because we're there to support them, and we can't support them unless we use the sound test. No. <laughs> so we, can, we can't support them unless they're able to tell us their needs and to tell us what the teachers like, what the teachers dislike, and how we can make things evolve. So some of the tools that we use for that collaboration is within the online learning environment or the Ontario e-community, which is what's called. Um, essentially, we do create some provincial-wide e-communities where the teachers can go in and access materials that are created by the ministry or that we are sharing through other means. 
Um, so this is an example of one of those communities that we've created, which is uh, 21st century teaching and learning, and this community was created to help support the, uh, the school board with their technology implementation. You know the rule, baby. And then beyond that, one of the uh, one of the things that came out of the collaboration with the school board and the forward and the cadets and everything <laughs> some type of virtual learning for the teachers or for anybody within the school board who were interested and um, so in the last year we did these virtual learning sessions and um, so the virtual learning sessions were moments throughout the year where we connected through adobe connect uh, which is another platform that we use and let anybody who wanted to come and watch uh, learn about some of the best practices from the different school boards as well as some of the the new I don't want to say the new things, but the new thoughts on the global competencies and, and how they're being implemented mm -hmm. throughout the Galactic process that we use about this. Um, so this year, just to give a quick overview of the types of best practices that came out. Uh, once again, we will share this presentation afterwards. So I, I just have to make it for you and then I can send it to some of the people here and they can make it accessible to all of you. Um, one of the one of the things that we shared was the Cartouche technologie. Um, so one of our school boards. Uh, in the southwest of Toronto, in the area of Toronto. Yeah. Uh, so they actually decided to do a board-wide initiative in terms of implementing technology. So for their school board, they kind of sat down at a table and decided where they would want to be in 2020. Uh, when it comes to, and when I say it's every, everything to do with technology, they really went to everything. So this actually opens up the recording of the uh, the recording of the session itself, so you can go and, and, and watch them explain it. But they've got this ginormous chart where in, in the right column, you've got the vision for 2020. So when it comes to uh, the support of the school system, the Wi-Fi networks, uh, the teacher's knowledge, uh, using devices in the classroom, what, is it, what the students need to know, what the teacher needs to know, what the principals need to know, um, how do they, how would they interact with parents, how are they going to take care of, see that kids playing in the room. Global citizenship. Um, so with their vision, they then did kind of a, a backtrack to when they were starting for every year. Well, if we want to get to a place where every single student is able to bring in a device either from home or access a device at school, what do we need to do year to year in order to achieve that? So they started with that, that final, this is where we want to be. And then they did a backtrack year by year all the way to the present. And then there, they've got a team within the board that every year makes sure to implement the next step in order to reach this goal. So they came in and presented that and we recorded it. So through the links in the presentation, you'll actually be able to go and listen to it. It is in French because as you mentioned, it's all the French language school board. Uh, but if, if that's something that interests you, you can definitely access it through there. You will see yeah. that the, uh, our colleague tomorrow will show some of the sessions yeah. Held in, in English. They, they also, also did have some sessions in English, but they, they touched on different uh, different issues, different topics because it was from the English boards versus the French. Um, the second one uh, that we were talking about is a member of the Texas team. Um, and I think Sally will be talking a bit more in depth about the Texas team later, so I won't go into detail about exactly who they are. But they are part of the CSYRP. And uh, Nils Gariga came in and talked about uh, virtual reality and augmented reality, so what's the differences between the two, and how each one could be used in the classroom. Um, also, when you have very limited equipment, how can you use these types of things in the classroom? So that was uh, another topic that was brought up. And the third one is the eStudio right here, or iStudio 21. Um, this is one of my personal favorites, because it's yeah. a uh, very, different. Very, very different initiative. Essentially, one uh, school board, if you want, uh, which is the Conseil Scolaire Catholique Franchement, I have a teacher there, Gilles Pierrier, uh, who's very passionate about technology and music, which are two subjects that really go hand in hand when you know how to take it there. Uh, the way that this project works is essentially at, at the beginning of the school year, they launch a collaborative platform online uh, through the, the Bright Space environment. So with the VLE, everyone is able to go and access that. And students who are musicians or are interested in speaking can go into this platform and start talking with each other and collaborating and creating music 
recording it, it's just putting it into the platform. So, oh yeah, everywhere in Ontario. So whether they're in, in, in Toronto or Saskatchewan, they can collaborate this way. And throughout the course of the year, so the students were interested, they offered these uh, workshops with professional musicians that go one instrument at a time. So for example, there's going to be a drummer that will come in and do a workshop about drums, and someone will come in and talk about uh, how they're a singer and how to create song lyrics and all of that. And all of these sessions are 100% virtual, but every school in Ontario can access them, and the teachers can show them to their schools in the classroom. And as the year progresses, there's a mini kind of contest, if you want that so, where the students start creating their own material and submitting song ideas. And then one song is selected, and when a song is selected, then they start uh, recruiting musicians. So, for example, if, if someone uh, writes a song, they will take the lyrics and say, okay, so this is the song here. And then everyone starts composing for that song. So the guitarist, the drummers, the bassist, sometimes there's a violinist, sometimes they have a harmonica, like no matter what their instrument is, and they start submitting it to the platform. And throughout the year, we have a team of professional musicians including uh, Gilles Thierry and his team of players, Kevin Thierry and his girls at the time. Um, and they find uh, the students' tracks that go well together. And then once they have the, the final version of the song, the student whose track was selected all gets brought into Ottawa physically. So they get to meet each other after collaborating for an entire year online, go into the music studio, and they get a professional recording of their song with the copyrights and the song is given to them. So that's another project that's happening on the French side. Um, so this is just some of the, the subjects that we were talking about in the virtual learning session. Again, you have the links to the actual recording of the Adobe Connect, so you can go in and listen to those, but it will all be in French. So make sure you either have a translator with you or it will translate next to the speakers. It can work, I've done that before. <laughs> yeah. And then here, this is just to so I did mention earlier that we are a minority in Ontario, so French language is definitely not dominant throughout the entire province. So it's something that we have to keep front of mind with every resource that we create, that we have and that we develop these things to help support the teachers or the educators in the province. Um, so IDELO is a part of TSO, and it is a website that was uh, created to uh, offer videos and, and online activities in French for French language students and teachers within the Ontario context. Because it's important to keep in mind that not everything that may come to Quebec or France or other regions of the world applies to us. Um, another example of a, an online resource is Enrichir Sans Savoir. And in here, I get to... that was honestly that was... the greatest I've ever seen because like three glasses got knocked over, so there's like no water anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so essentially in here there's there's a bunch of activities that uh, the students can go in or the teachers can guide their students to go in. And uh, one of them that's mentioned in the presentation is the, I tried to translate the, the phrase, the anglicism is that font us, because there's a lot of anglicism in, in Ontario, especially within the French context, because we grew up with English all around us. Um, and sometimes our brains start thinking in those languages at once. And you may even, <laughs> that happened to me earlier this week, I was doing a presentation and I was supposed to be translating to French for someone else and then I started speaking English again and I did not even realize it. Um, so it's important to keep that front of mind that we are in a minority context and those resources that are developed for that context are important. Okay, need to go faster, double time. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so on uh, for this professional uh, development, uh, the ministry, the, on the French for the French language school board, is funding um, a team. It's called Tech, and uh, they are a team of um, experts in uh, pedagogy, experts in technology. And what they do is that they support the 12 French language school board in their shift for the 21st century. So they can uh, be either in the classroom, they can either help them online, they can do uh, co-teaching, they, uh, uh, they will also supply um, self-learning uh, capsules 
And uh, so this is a link to to uh, to cap to cap sixteen. Um, I um, you have some information here. I'm conscious that the time is uh, uh, so that's why I won't uh, go deeper. You also have a matrix here. That matrix is um, it's the salmon model. Okay, the salmon model is how to integrate technology and pedagogy from embellishing your your lesson or the, the, the pedagogy to transforming it. There, that matrix is available for the teachers and also for the school principals. You have videos, you have private, uh, success practice. Um, we are also, um, well, we talked about the triage, yeah. okay? So the uh, responsible people for um, uh, the VLE. And uh, also from the hip tech six, so they are, like I said, uh, the, um, they support school boards. Um, if that's new, they, uh, they, they, are, they have created an environment called Formapro. And Formapro is, um, it's a self-learning uh, um, training, okay? And uh, I just wanna make sure, okay? I just wanna show you what they are. So the teachers can go on that website and here you have one on literacy, a kindergarten, growth mindset. That, that one is going to be uh, available in the next week or two, uh, next week probably. And uh, there will be um, eight of them all together. And actually, uh, we have, what, we want to make sure that those capsules, they really help teachers, professional learning. So what we're doing, is that we are um, we are working with a university who is doing a research on what are those capsules and to see the effect of the, well the the, the trans the, the change the um, uh, the, uh, the way the teachers acquire knowledge but not only following that capsule but with complementary support for example participating in blogs. Um, Twitter, uh, TED, uh, Ed Chat, and uh, so it's. Uh, we will have the result that will start in September. Will end in Ju uh, next June. So we will see what helps better in the complementary support while um, teacher is doing self training. And we are. I think we are finished. Well, those student boards. Very quickly for us, quickly as I can be. Um, so in, in Ontario, we do have some programs for the student boards because we keep talking about how the students have to be at the center of their learning and they're very, very important. Uh, we also want to hear from them. Um, so one of the, there, there's kind of three, uh, the three faces of short, three, the three faces of the student voice. Um, one, the first one is the NPAC, so the Minister of Student Advisory Council, in which 60 students are selected from the province every year, and they actually go and meet directly with the Minister of Education to do forums about how they want education to change or to improve, and they write a report with recommendations to the Minister. Um, the latest one actually just finished this morning before I went before coming here, um, and every year the students create a ginormous graphic um, where they write on post-its their recommendations and their thoughts, and then we have graphic artists that come in and create uh, visuals for what the students are saying. Um, so these were from the previous cohort, so the 2013, 14, 15, and 16 cohort. Uh, the latest one, I, I do have it, it's from a year previous at the end, I just got a time lapse that was created. Um, and these are all available on the uh, Facebook page of the Student Voice team and on the uh, Ontario Government website. Um, the second part of Student Voice is Speak Up project, and then there's the third one is Student Voice Researcher. So in the Speak Up project, the students can go and get uh, grants, so government grants up to $2,500 to do a community project within their school to help improve student life. And then students that are researchers, they receive uh, research training on how to conduct research, and then they can go and uh, do some type of social research within their school. So if you want more information on those programs, you can go on the website. Uh, but the student voice is something that we try to keep front of mind. And when we develop those modular courses and we develop all these online tools, 
we tried to include the student voice somewhere in the process of creation so that it reflects the student. <laughs> so uh, right now we are mostly oh, yeah. just this is so new programming. Um, so I've already talked quite a bit about blended learning, and I, I, I realize we have things hybrid learning, but in French we call it apprentissage hybrid, in English it's blended. And I always forget. But I think hybrid sounds a little more fun in my opinion. Um, and for programming, we've actually got a website that came out on both the French side and the English side, Programmation uh, Elementaire, where the teachers can go in and they can learn a bit about what is programming, why should students do it, um, and my favorite part is the final one where we actually give them lesson plans that are directly linked within the entire curriculum. And one of the things that we try to do is to keep in mind that not everybody has access to technology. So within these, we've got a bunch of lesson plans that are programming with technology, but there's also a whole bunch that are programming without technology. So if a student wants to learn how to code or a teacher wants to do coding activities in the classroom, they don't need computers or anything. All they need is paper, pencil, and they can actually do some coding activities. And so this is to kind of help the, uh, the teachers know a little bit more about that. So these are all resources that you can go in and explore, um, but there's definitely many options. Mm -hmm. And that next is next. part of slide, the, our next step, what we are working on right now. Okay, now we, we have the competencies, the global competencies, the school board, they ask us, okay, how do you assess them? What does evaluation looks like? So we are working on that right now. And we are also working on how to integrate them into the curriculum. And a little bit about the curriculum as well is that the global competencies can already be found within pretty much all the curriculum. But they are not kind of highlighted or outlined within the curriculum. So the teachers are like, oh, I'm not sure where to find those global competencies. Uh, with all the STEAM initiatives, so science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, we're trying to start doing more cross curricular activities, and those cross curricular activities are centered completely around the global competencies. So it helps the teachers see the links between not only the global competencies.